Hello there and welcome. This is That Shakespeare Life. I'm Cassidy Cash and this week we are exploring the history of the fruit meddler. In the 16th century there was a very unique fruit called a meddler and now really the meddler still exists but it's a whole lot more common in England than it is in other parts of the world. Here in the United States where I live I don't even know that I've ever even heard of it so this was a brand new fruit for me and if it doesn't grow there natively for you you may be confused about what a meddler is when you come across it in Shakespeare's five separate references to the meddler. Shakespeare talks about grafting meddlers, sitting under a meddler tree, as well as a rotten meddler, and even questions whether or not someone should hate a meddler. So to understand this fruit better, what it is and what it was used for, we sat down and talked with our friend and culinary historian Neil Buttery. Here's what he had to say about how Shakespeare would have eaten a meddler. What was the traditional way to eat a meddler? You mentioned that the outside was not the part that you would eat. So how would somebody eat this fruit? Well, this is, I guess, where we hit a problem, at least for modern taste, because it's not a fruit you can just pick off the tree or even really pick out of your fruit bowl and just chomp down on there like you can an apple. First of all, if you pick them when they look like they might be ready, <laughs> what you'll find is when you bite into it, it's extremely sour and astringent. There's no sweetness there at all. And there's no particular um, dominant flavor there at all either. It's just, you know, you just kind of pucker up and it's not very pleasant at all. The trick with a meddler is that you have to let it, if you can, you, if you let it do this on the tree, it's the best, but we can't always do that. But you have to basically let it start to become very overripe. Some people say rotten, that's a little bit unfair. It's not, it's not rotten, but it's getting overripe. Then when you open it up, it's, I think they're delicious, but I mentioned there's the, there's the big seeds in there. You can't eat the skin. It gets very squashy. So you kind of have to end up squashing it between your fingers and sucking out, <laughs> and you have to suck out the flesh from inside. And then every now and again, you get a pip, a seed. And yeah, it can be a bit of a pain. But they are delicious. They, they kind of taste like, um, I would say, a cross between a, a very sort of tart, sour apple, uh, prunes and dates, if you can kind of imagine that. So quite caramelly flavours, but at the same time, very fresh, sour flavours too. Now, so, I've, yeah, oh, I, I, I've been following Neil on, on Twitter, who recently made, I think it was a jam out of mm. meddlers and shared some beautiful pictures of, of that. But I wondered, Neil, are the, what are the culinary uses for the meddler from the 16th century? What were some of the, the dishes that they would have made at it? Would they have made a kind of meddler jam? Yes, here it is, my meddler jelly. Oh, I found wonderful. It the back. I He's found got the it. jar there. I found it at the back of a cupboard. <laughs> I forgot I had it. It's about five years old. Oh, and and it's that's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, what it's a, got nicer. Yeah, I, know, I love that I know. color too. You're right. It looks very caramely. Yeah. It, yes, it is. You don't get a, a very clear jelly uh, because you have to let them blet. That's the word for letting them go very, very soft. And oh, yeah, I didn't quite finish off my thought before. So yeah, people say, oh, you have to wait till it's rotten fermented. It's not rotten or fermented. The, the nearest I can think of, and this is going to love or hate for some people, but it's more like when you let a banana go really brown and overripe. Now, some people hate that. <laughs> I do know that. <laughs> I love a nice really brown banana. But that's a, that's just like the meddlers. They get uh, they get soft, they get sweeter, and they get much more uh, aromatic as well. To hear our entire interview with Neil about the meddler, including his answers to why Shakespeare used the meddler as an insult and some specific gardening tips on where you can find a meddler for yourself, as well as how to grow it and cultivate it there where you live, you can listen to our entire conversation on the podcast at castycash.com slash episode 212. We'll place a link to that below this video. That website is also where you can unlock bonus history content related to today's show, including woodcuts, portraits, sketches, and some in-depth history research that went into building today's show that is available for our patrons and you can use the patreon button on the show notes website to unlock that bonus content the video version of today's show is available in the video library for patrons and you can explore that and all the bonuses available to our patrons at patreon.com slash that shakespeare life
That's it for this week. I'm Cassidy Cash, and I hope you learned something new about the Bard. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you.